in the boating world, there are boats that have lines that are eye-catching and anybody that is a mariner can pick out a halibut boat from a thousand miles away. When the Tanda was designed, the person that did it knew what a boat was supposed to look like and the lines on the vessel are absolutely incredible. The boat does an amazing job when it's fishing. Uh, it packs fish well, it handles weather well, and it is a very pretty boat. If I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah, hi, my name's Richie Shaw. I'm the skipper and owner of the Tanza. I've been commercial fishing halibut in BC for the last 33 years. I'm one of a group of people that have been fishing halibut in BC for, well, since the 1800s, since 1880, but it's been a family type business ever since the get-go. From the first beginnings of our society, small boats have put out from the ports of this country, braving the hardships of sea life to earn a living from the ocean's wealth. It's usually a small time operation in the halibut fishery, but it's been a major source of good quality food for Canada, the US, and all over the world. Most of our fishing is done from the top end of Vancouver Island right up to the border of BC and Alaska. And there are key spots on the coast that there are halibut, and they were basically found by people that fish halibut through a lot of hard work. Now we've got computers that have charting programs that you can chart the bottom of the ocean. You can get a little bit more sophisticated on how to find the ground. But the, the pioneers found the halibut grounds and all we've done is improved on where they, where they are. Typically when our fisheries start, we, we start off with icing up the vessel. Very important that those fish get iced quickly. This is about minus 15 degrees Celsius right now, and it's quite cold on the hand, but it chills the fish down really quickly, which is a, a huge asset to the fish. When you're getting ready to go, you always have to hail out to our Propelago Marine, the service provider. This tells them that you're leaving where you're going and when you're coming back. Uh, once that hail out's done, we can leave port and then head to the grounds so it's all part of the process. At four o'clock in the morning, fishing starts. As the ship steams slowly forward, the hooks are baited in careful and rhythmic rotation with frozen herring, one half to each hook. In turn, each of four men takes his correct hook in anticipation, baits it, then casts it over the side. Since the 20s, the halibut fishermen have been very proactive in keeping the, the stocks monitored. The International Pacific Halibut Commission has biologists and scientists on staff, and they really care about the resource. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans has the last call in British Columbia on how the resource is caught. It's probably one of the best run fisheries in the world. It's a high-valued product, and you have to look after it like it is a high-valued product. Every fish on the boat is dressed, which means the, the gills come out of it and the guts come out of it, and the fish is washed. That eliminates any blood that may get into the fillet. The next thing is get it into the hatch and get it cold as quick as you possibly can. If you follow those three rules, you're going to have very good fish. Okay, so here we have a logbook. Everything that comes aboard or gets released on this vessel is entered in here. Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is the Tanza. I'd like to hail in for halibut, please. Most of the fish on the vessels now is sold prior to it even landing. So it makes it for a very quick turnaround for the buyer. 
So every fish that comes up on the hook is accounted for, and that's why we see there's some rockfish in here and there's some sable fish. None of this fish get discarded. It all gets brought onto the boat, it all gets accounted for, and it all gets counted. There's no waste. So that's where we've come up with this integrated fishery. And it really does work well. If we're planning on coming in with 20,000 pounds or 25,000 pounds, we'll head into a port where the fish is offloaded, where it's validated by Archipelago, the service provider. So Archipelago is certified by the Government of Canada to provide monitoring services to the ground fish fisheries here in British Columbia. On board the halibut fishery, they have electronic monitoring systems that collect information as well as cameras that collect the actual catch that's coming on board. And with the cameras, you can see if the catch is being retained or released. To me, any of the, the work that we have to do to keep a log, to keep all this going and counting all the fish is worth it. This is a load of fish that's just arriving now from our plant in Port Edward, British Columbia. It's important to keep the cold chain intact for the fish for quality. So when the fish leaves in our truck from Port Edward, it will be set at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll arrive here in Vancouver and we'll take it off the truck and put it into the cooler. It's all about cold chain preservation. So this stays one or two degrees above freezing at all times very streamlined, they're very professional, very organized, and yes, they take a lot of pride in their work. A wild Pacific halibut, especially Canada, has a very high quality reputation. The average trip length is only three to five days for a halibut boat now. The quality is high. We can verify to the customer every step of the way that the quality of the, the fish is intact. Every halibut has a tag that's attached to it at the time of offload by Archipelago. This tag is, shows that it's a Canadian halibut, it has a number on it, so it's fully traceable right from the boat to the customer's plate. I think that fishermen are amongst the greatest conservationists in the world. Fishermen really want a, a job for the future generation because many, many fishermen that are fishing are second, third, fourth generation fishermen. Well, halibut's such a great one. It's a great fish for people to cook at home because uh, obviously it's a, it's a local, uh, wild, well cared for, very high quality product. Um, but it's also a nutritious product. We know we should be eating more fish and putting more fish into our diets. My name is Mike McDermott and I am the co-owner and partner at The Fish Counter in Vancouver. Well, for me, Pacific halibut is, is really, and has been for the longest time, been really a, a model fishery in terms of, of effective and sustainable fisheries management. If you are going to get people to truly buy into sustainable fish, that fish needs to be the best quality out of anything. It has to be the best fish that they've ever had. There's a direct relationship between how environmentally responsibly, how much care and intention the fisherman is putting into that and the quality of the end product. These are fishermen that have put in generations uh, that are proud of providing a premium product to the table. You can't get a nicer quality fish. Well, I've been doing it for 33 years and it's, I think it's, uh, it's something that you can be proud of if you're a halibut fisherman because you've done a good job and it, it shows. We are looking after this resource. You can wake up in the morning and go, you know what, our fish look unreal and all I can see is this thing getting better and we did it. You will not find a better product than what comes off of a British Columbia halibut boat. It's absolutely the top notch.